Hello, my name's Rhiannon and I'm going to participate in Nonfiction November. This was uh, this is hosted by Olive at the Book Olive and Gemma at Nonfic Books, and I'll leave all the details down below. Um, I don't really read that much nonfiction, which is quite surprising because most of my nonfiction books are about Doctor Who or history or Asperger's and I don't really, I haven't really, I, I read a little bit of nonfiction. I will read a magazine and that's about it. So this, this readathon really speaks to me because I really do want to read more nonfiction. So let's go on with the books. <clears throat> let's go on the books. Um, the first one is new and new to me and a new subject to me. Um, I picked this out from the library because I love the cover and it's the A Mindfulness Guide for the Frazzled by Ruby Wax. Um, Ruby Wax is a comedian. She's from America but she mostly does stuff over in the UK. She went into a degree on mindfulness and she does have depression and she uses mindfulness a lot. Um, I loved, I love the cover. I want to, as, 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 as someone of Asperger, as, you know, someone of Asperger's, I want to learn a bit more about mindfulness and do more things with mindfulness. Um, at the moment, I have started it, and it is good. It's like, um, it's just explaining what mindfulness is, and, and basically she puts in her own stories in bold. She takes you through mindfulness and how you do it and things like that. So I'm really interested in reading it, and... I think, and this is a new subject to me, so I'm looking forward to reading and finding out. Also, um, new to me and the subject, I got this ages ago because it was a TV show and it's called, this is Our Zoo, it's by June Mottished. She is the daughter of the person who founded Chester Zoo. Um, it takes you, for, she writes about her life story, her growing up, the animals, her growing up around round animals and things like that. It's got lovely pictures in it. I haven't read it yet, but it was, it was just fascinating because I love zoos and I watched our zoo and I thought it was quite good. It's got pictures in of lions, um, pictures of June in there growing up as well. I thought it was just, a, I just think this is going to be a lovely book. And if you're an animal lover as well, I think you'll like, love reading this book too. The next subject is controversial. I don't own very many controversial books, but um, I will try and find one or something. But um, I really don't really like reading too many controversial books. I like to stay away from controversial subjects. And if I do have opinions on them, I just like to keep, keep them to myself. The, the third one is important to me, um, but they do fit in important... Um, I got this out of the library as well, and I bought, got The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan. Um, she sadly passed away, and this is her essays on um, things. I don't know what it's about. I don't know what I don't really want to know what it's about. I only know it's won it won the Goodread Choice Awards, won the Choice Awards, and I'm really looking forward to reading this and delving in and reading maybe a few chapters of it at night time. And then um, these two books are important to me. One of them is a reread. Um, it's called Cajun and Chaos by Victoria Briggs, a dyspraxic guide to breaking free. She grew up, she went to boarding school with her dyspraxia and she wrote about how dyspraxia affects her and tips about coping with dyspraxia. It covers everything from bullying to school to her experiences. Um, I, and I can't wait to read this um, to dating as well. Um, so if you want to know more about dyspraxia, or if you've got someone you know who has dyspraxia and you just want to help them, this is a great book. Sorry about the cover, it is meant to look like that. Um, yes, it's called Cajun Chaos, and I really, really love this book. And the next book I'm reading is by someone who has Asperger's, and it's called Asperger's Syndrome and Mindfulness, Taking Refuge in the Buddha, by Chris Mitchell. He has Asperger's, and he wrote about, about... Um, how people like 
me can do mindfulness. I'm really looking forward to reading this. It's also important to me. And I think anything about Asperger's and dyspraxia are very, very important subjects to write about in non in nonfiction. Um, and I just like re re reading about it. Um, next one is fascinating. I picked out a few books that I thought were fascinating um, to me. Um, the first one is The Times Adventures, How Doctor Who Co Conquered TV. This is the critical history of Doctor Who. This, this critical... Yeah. Yeah, this critical history of Doctor Who covers the series' entire 45 years, from the creation of the show to its triumph as Britain's top TV drama, which sounds really, really, really good, and I can't wait to read it. I've had this on my shelf ages ago. It's also by a guy called... It's by, by Brian J. Robb. I have a lot of non-fiction Doctor Who stuff. And then, then if I finish that one, I have some more to choose from, which I think is fascinating. Um, it's Sacred Site, Sacred Sites of Ancient Egypt by Lorna Oakes. I love these books; they're really good. They've got really lovely pictures in them. Next one I've got is the Illustrated Encyclopedia of um, Aztec and Maya. I don't know whether this counts, but I like reading it. <laughs> I, lo I love looking for it. The Encyclopedia of Mythology. Um, the History and Conquests of Ancient Rome. This has Babri Rings in it. I live next to Babri Rings. It's down the road from Wimborne, Dorset, UK. It's a Roman hill fort. I like finding pictures of Babri Rings. And last but not least, Kings and Queens of Great Britain. I've chosen for my fascinating non-fiction read. Uh, I love giving myself choices. I think that's the whole part of this readathon. And then I'm just going to move on to miscell miscellaneous. I found some miscellaneous non-fiction books that I would like to probably read in bed or flick for in one sitting. Um, the first one is Treasures from the First 50 Years of Doctor Who, The Vault. Uh, I got given to this as a Christmas present one year and I absolutely love it. It's got a map the TV studios. I love, I can't wait to sit down and read this one sitting. This is a really good coffee table read non-fiction book and if you like, love Doctor Who then you'll love reading, you'll love reading this book. The next book I borrowed from my parents because I was watching the series with my boyfriend is the Human U is Human Universe. It's the companion to the BBC TV series by Professor Brian Cox and Andrew Cohen, and it's just basically about the universe. And it's got lovely pictures in it as well. Look how beautiful that is. It's got just got lovely pictures that we can read and stuff. And it's always fascinating to find out about the universe as well. The next book I got. Is Adawidi on Adawidi. It's his biography. Um, I picked this up ages like ages ago last year, and it's like really interesting layout. Um, he basically interviews himself in this book, which I quite like the idea of. So I can't wait to dive into this one. Um, the next book is a memoir, but it reads like a novel. It's called Between Gods by Alison Pitt. Basically, she went and discovered her history, and she found some very fascinating stuff um, when she did. So this would be a good read. Um, and she, she, yeah. I found I picked this up because I thought it was like really fascinating. So I can't wait to read this. Get to this one if I have time. And another one is, another Doctor Who related, is The Writer's Tale by um, Doctor Who, by Russell T. Davis himself. He wrote this book just at the end of his tenure as Doctor Who showrunner, and then they made another one. <laughs> they brought out this one in paperback, but it had extra bits from the special, the David Tennant specials, so it has like little bits from John Sim as well, which... But I want to read the original hardback one first, and then I'll reread. Then I'll read the last bits in the paperback. So yes, so that is kind of my non-fiction. I gone through. I've gone through the challenges of you, and then I kind of. Then at the end was just like, this is what I have if I get through every single one of those books, which probably not. But I'm looking forward to reading some non-fiction this month and I'll probably go into my local library as well at some point and try and get some more non-fiction as well. Anyway, I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.